back here at the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum at Bass Pro Shops here in Springfield, Missouri. I'm with Jim Zipika, director of all the NRA museums. And I think this one's appropriate because I think somewhere in the name of this gun, I heard the word Springfield. That's so right. what a better place We're than looking at Springfield, Missouri. Missouri so. Why not look at a U.S. <laughs> Springfield 1903 rifle. U.S. military rifle starting in 1903, continuing well past World War II. Uh, a very classic Mauser type bold action rifle and a, a, a workhorse of the U.S. military. And some history behind this one. This gun is special. You guessed that. <laughs> this belonged to a guy who uh, uh, may have been the world's best long range shooter at the time, Major John Hessian. H-E-S-S-I-O-N. Uh, he bought this gun probably about 1906. And uh, that was the time when he set a world record for shooting at 800 yards. Okay. That's a shot. <laughs> Media had a different relationship with shooting back then. This was headline front page mm -hmm. news in the newspapers of the time. Uh, a little, little different relationship yeah, with the media I'd, I'd back say. then than it is now. But he went on to win championship after championship with this rifle uh, uh, up into the 1920s, 1930s. Uh, one of the greatest target shooters, one of the greatest long range shooters of all time. Now we got to jump back in time a little bit here and look at what's going on in Britain about the time he bought this rifle. Back in 1689, the British subjects had been given a bill of rights that uh, guaranteed that subjects may have arms for their defense. Okay. That carried through for centuries. 1900, a British prime minister stated that one of his goals, that there would be a rifle in every cottage. World War I, politics changed. In, uh, in uh, uh, 1920, 1920 uh, Britain passed a law that restricted the right wow. of the citizens to own rifles and handguns. So there it started. It started. They registered them, and you had to have a reason. Right. You had to have a reason to own them. They had to be registered. And then the, the firearms restrictions and confiscations followed from then on. Uh, through the 1920s, 1930s, new laws every decade that just took firearms out of the hands of uh, uh, the British, uh, British population. A little problem in 1940. Hitler's got plans for European dom domination. Oh, yeah. Certainly includes England. It certainly includes England. British military has some pretty good arms, but they left a lot of them on the shore at Dunkirk. Uh, and the British people were disarmed. So there was an organization called the American Committee for the Defense of British Homes, and they sent out a call for individuals to donate their personal firearms to be shipped to Britain to be used for home defense because they were expecting a, a German invasion yeah. of, of the British Isles. And Hessian packed up his championship rifle He's got a list of his championships that he's won on this on a plaque on the gun. And then he added another plaque on the back that says, for obvious reasons, the return of this rifle after Germany is defeated would be greatly appreciated. Oh, wow. That wow. organization and the NRA sent 7,000 American-owned guns to Britain. And that combined with the American government Lend-Lease program rearmed the British and gave them a fighting chance in, in World War II. Wow, what a this firearm that he's, this for, that he's won so much with, he took that and sent it over there. And it did come back. And it came back. And then it came to That's the NRA the Museum. Yeah, yeah, so uh, a lot of history there. That is such a great story. And like we said before, Jim, the, the, the walls, the firearms are just speaking from the walls here all around us with great stories and technology and, and just... How can we come and see this? There are a thousand guns here at the NRA National Sporting Arms Museum at Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri. Couple thousand at the NRA National Firearms Museum at NRA headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia. Or you can see them online at nramuseums.com. Thank you, sir. Another great installment here in Springfield, Springfield of Curator's Corner. <laughs>